Go download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. Hello, I just wanted to talk a little bit about pick slanting or pick etching or both of them, uh, which is really just ways of, of, of angling the pick uh, or positioning the pick uh, in relation to the string to get faster results when you pick. And uh, for me, that's really one of the areas in which we intellectualize and conceptualize a little bit too much uh, in the attempt to get there faster. And that's really a, a good process, right? Whenever you're faced with a challenge, you look into it first and use your intelligence to really say, okay, how do I get my result, uh, results in the fastest way possible? But I think there are really two categories of doing that. One category is looking specifically at how, what can you do over here to make picking easier. And then the other category is how do you learn picking the fast, how do you practice it in the most efficient way? How do you teach your brain to not only pick alternate picking or whatever picking style you want, but how do you teach it fast? And how do you develop the accuracy and the precision and the relaxed picking style that you want? And that's really over here. While the little details about how to slant the pick, how to, uh, how to position it uh, in relation to the strings is another discussion. But that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And I don't have the ultimate truth. I just have what makes sense to me and what have made sense to my students. But so let's look into that. Pick slanting would be this, you know, when you sweep pick. You do this to, in, a, in order to, to make it easier to sweep across the string and make, make it uh, so it feels like there's less resistance from the strings. Slanting, or oh, edging, sorry, would be doing this. So instead of playing parallel to the strings or holding your, your pick like that, then you simply just do this, so you play more with the edge. This makes the, the pick rounder uh, at the tip. So this this is like playing with a fat uh, pick with a very round uh, tip. I've written a whole article about that, uh, how to choose the right pick for where you are in your development. But So both of these techniques makes it easier to pick the string. Easier how? Well, easier in the way that when you don't have accuracy, if you have perfect accuracy and you pick with the exact same picking depth each and every time, then you will experience the same amount of resistance going from string to string every time. But if you're not that experienced, you, you tend to, to, you know, you pick a little bit, you know, one hundredth of a millimeter towards the body at one pick stroke, and then a little bit less at another pick stroke, and just that little difference there can increase the resistance you feel from the string two or three or four times. So, so until we are extremely accurate when we pick, we're going to, our brain is going to search for all kinds of ways in which to compensate for the, for the fact that we're not accurate. <laughs> and these ways of holding the pick are both uh, very common and they give you results faster. But this technique here, uh, edging the pick like this, will influence your sound very much. Let me just exaggerate. So if I pick, you know, uh, in parallel to the string, I can, I, I get a very clear note because the attack is very clear. Um, but if I do this, I get a very soft attack. Let me exaggerate completely. Right? And if you want the soft attack, that's great. But now you are actually using a technique that is designed to make you play better, but it also influences your sound. So is that cool? Well, maybe it is. If you want a permanent soft sound when you pick, that's perfect, right? 
But if you want to really master the technique, the picking technique, then just stay with that position there, right? Just stay holding it like that because that's how you develop precision. Um, and if you start practicing with a technique where you hold your pick like this all the time, then you are going to practice holding the pick and your brain is going to do that for the rest of your life. And so it, it's really limiting your, your ability to express yourself and use all kinds of... It's a good, it's, it's, it, it changes the sound, which is cool. But it's kind of like people who always vibrate or have tremolo on every single note they play, then it's not an effect anymore. It's just part of your sound, certainly. Right? Um, so I really warmly recommend that you just stay with that picking position where the pick is just etched just a tiny little bit like this because that makes sense from the curve of your hand when you pick like that. It's a circle, right, that goes all the way around here. And so your pick will always be a little bit like that uh, to the string, and that's okay. And I also recommend that in order to compensate uh, for the thickness of the strings, you know, if you pick like this, and you, you pick all six strings, then the bottom strings here are going to be much thicker than the top strings. And so you might want to or etch your pick just a little bit, or slant it, whatever you, word you want to use, just a little bit when you get to the thicker strings here, because that will even out the resistance you get from each string, so you get the same amount of resistance from each string. I hope that makes sense. So down here, it's almost parallel. What is parallel? And then as I go up here, I just draw my thumb back a little bit. And then it goes down again like that. This is really a smart move now because, um, because you, you use this little technique uh, as a way of getting there faster, but you're not really influencing your sound. Because it's so minute, it's so little, and if you really want to, you can really, you know, get the edge on there to have that effect, right? But for, for the picking technique alone, I just recommend you just use it as a way of evening out uh, the different thicknesses of the strings. So you get the same amount of resistance when you pick, uh, right? So that's really a constructive, really good way of using that little technique there. When it comes to this thing here, I do that because, you know, when I sweep pick, you see that? I kind of, you know, put my pick like, and then the other way around. I don't, I don't do it up so much as I do it down. And the reason why I do it, now I don't do it. Uh, the reason why I do it is because I wasn't conscious about it, so I just came up with that little trick there of making it easier for me to sweep pick by doing that. And so now I have to work my way out of it again because it influences the sound, it makes me change my hand position, so I have to do more work to get the same result right. It's not necessary to do either of this. It's just a, a, an attempt to create a shortcut to getting better faster. But this is one of the shortcuts that's really just annoying in the long run because you, you're using extra movement to compensate for the fact that you're not accurate. But I am accurate at this point, but I still do the thing. <laughs> so I still use unnecessary resources uh, and if I want to get rid of it, I have to use extra effort. So, but the reason we do it is we, got, we want to get there faster and we underestimate how long time or how much effort we have to put into learning these picking techniques. It takes millions of repetitions, of flawless repetitions, you know, picking up and down, going from string to string, flawlessly. And the worst thing you can do, and the ultimate really destructive shortcut, is trying to practice fast. You know, trying to and come up with all kinds of little techniques to, to make it easier to pass from one string to another, instead of just learning to pass from one string to another, right? <laughs> and it takes time. And so we start, uh, I must be doing the right thing halfway there, right? We start analyzing and coming up, and, and we start looking at the people that has the picking technique that we want. And we start seeing all kinds of little things they do. Oh, he's slanting his pick. Oh, he's doing this so 
circular movements, always doing all kinds of stuff. But all that is really not uh, constructive advice. It's just bad habits that the people, you know, at that level has incorporated into their picking technique. So, and I have my own ones that I try to get rid of uh, because I wasn't conscious about stuff when, when, I, when I was practicing really heavily, right? So, so stay out of that and really uh, focus on, you know, doing those millions of repetitions and trust that your brain, if it has the right time, if it has the right kind of environment that you are going to give it, in which it can learn, which means that you just, you just do it as fast as you can, but you do not sacrifice accuracy. You do not sacrifice those accents or whatever details you're working on, because when you do that, you're just working yourself out of the cool, the accurate, the fast picking technique, one step at a time. It's like the tortoise and the hare, right? Uh, the tortoise just goes boom, boom, boom every day, it's just one step at a time, just doing the right thing. And the hare or the whatever, you know, the bunny or whatever you call it, it just tries to give you all kinds of smart little things things going from one to the other, and it ends up actually losing the race of all that cleverness instead of just doing the millions of perfect repetitions in front of the TV or, you know, talking to a friend uh, or whatever you're doing. I mean, just think about it. If you can do this. Oh. If you can do that at that tempo, why on earth would you be why would it be necessary for you to use all kinds of different techniques to do it faster? All you need to do is practice this until the point where it's so easy for your brain that it can just speed up the process. You know, it's just easy for it because it's been doing it for millions of times, right? And that's what your brain is actually capable of doing is it's able to speed the process up without you having to come up with all kinds of shortcuts. So that's my advice on that point and pick slanting and pick etching and all of that is that we analyze too much and we forget that it's really a simple little discipline of sitting down and then letting your brain handle it. As long as you give it perfect repetitions, it's going to gradually uh, simply be able to do what you can do slow. It's just able to speed that up if you do the, do, do the right things and practice in the right way. Go download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub-skills of legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. Thank you.